This morning I wanted to speak um, concerning some thoughts that I had this last week on the provisions that we have been granted by the Lord both in the life in which we are living now and provisions to carry us into the world to come. Um, Luke 12, 28 through 32. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It says it is His good pleasure to give you the kingdom, something that's eternal and does not fade away. So why should we let ourselves get worried and consumed with these things that are passing away? Passing away, the Lord wants to give us the kingdom. It's His good pleasure. Amen. He is looking for a reason to bless. Amen. God tells us not to worry that He will provide all that we need. If He clothes the grass of the field that is there today and cast in the oven tomorrow, how much more will He care for His people who are made after His own image? But what does he say? Do not worry what to eat or what to drink or what to wear. The Lord knows what you have need of, and he will not leave his children without. But he says, instead, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and these other things, they will be added unto you. Amen. He makes it to where we can focus wholly on him and live our lives for him. He takes care of our earthly needs so that we can live for him. However, this does not mean that things will always be easy or work out immediately or conveniently. It may seem to those who do not look at the situation through eyes of faith that the Lord is not providing. But this is where faith comes in. Trusting that the Lord will enable you to make it through whatever circumstance dictates, whether you have much or you have little. In this, you will actually be more aware of the things that you can do without here on the earth. So we don't want to be um, atta so attached to the things of this world that we're not able to let go of them at any moment. Where is your treasure? Because that's where your heart is. Is it having all that we can on this earth? Can we let go of these things at any moment without regret or tears? Take for example in uh, Matthew 19, uh, 16, the rich man who was asked to go and s who was told to go and sell all that he had. Ask yourself, is there anything that I would not be willing to give up to follow Jesus? If, and if, there, if there's not, or if there is, then we better, um, looking to God, ask for grace to be able to let go of these things. Amen. If you ask yourself this, um, can I sell all that I have, so to speak? Am I willing to give all to the Lord, to lay down my life for Him right this instant, and you don't think that you could, then there's your answer where your treasure is. As believers, we live one day at a time, for you know not when the Son of Man will return. So how silly is it, is it for us to be consumed with worry and distracted from heavenly things, worrying about things of this life, when we know that our time on this earth is so short? James 4.14 Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. Amen. If our life is a vapor and we're not guaranteed tomorrow, then don't we want to make this very moment the moment where we are being faithful and giving yeah, ourselves today. to the Lord? Sorry. Knowing that in one second we could die or the Lord could come back. He will come as a thief in the night. Mark thirteen thirty two. But of that day and that hour, thank you, Knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So knowing that no man knows when the Lord will return, don't we always want to be ready and prepared, not having these worldly cares consuming our thoughts. So brethren, let us always be trusting the, that the Lord is our provider. Let us cast our cares upon Him because He cares for us. Matthew 6, 8 the latter part of Matthew 6, 8, For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask Him. Amen. And in doing this, in, in um, casting our cares upon Him and trusting in Him to provide for us, we're glorifying Him. 
Thank you, brethren. Amen.